My name is Anthony Malat. Gana ki chet du asak, cha akna chet siti, tagwe di aya chet, kwashke kwan yedi aya chet, koe kan athabaskan dutch chen aya chet. My Klingit name is Gunnick. I'm Eagle Killer Whale, Tsagwedi from Cape, Alaska. My father is Kwashkaquan from Yakutat, Alaska. And my mother is Koyukon Athabaskan from Rampart on the Yukon River. I, I grew up in Yakutat, um, went to high school in Juneau, and as he said, went off to Stanford. Uh, the whole entire plan was how short the time can I spend outside of Alaska to gain the experience they always told me I had to get before moving back to Alaska. Uh, ten years went by, two kids, uh, way longer than I expected, and I've been home for about nine years now. Uh, eight years as Chief Investment Officer for Sea Alaska Corporation, and a bit over the last year as Chief Executive Officer. Uh, who in here knows ANCSA? I see some faces. Who can describe it concisely in less than a minute? <laughs> so all the ANCSA folks, we, we have our five-minute version, the 30-minute version, the two-hour version. You know, sea Alaska is one of the 12 regional ANCSA corporations. Uh, ANCSA was a land settlement that occurred in 1971. And again, Native Alaskans have been trying for the last 40 years to figure out that short description of what ANCSA is. There are some significant differences. Uh, we have a whole infrastructure in Alaska that is different than the lower 48 tribes. We have our tribes. They're not the landowners. The regional corporations are the, are the landowners. There was 44 million acres transferred to the 12 regional <coughs> corporations and close to 200 village corporations. Uh, we represent Southeast Alaska, Sea Alaska does. Um, total acreage of Southeast Alaska, our traditional homeland of the Clinkett, Simshian, and Haida, is about 22 million acres. We received uh, 360,000 acres, a little less than 2% of our traditional homelands. Historically, we've been natural resource operators, timber harvesters. Uh, right now, we're taking an effort to create uh, some growth operating platforms one in government services, one in seafood, natural foods, and of course, we'll maintain our natural resource focus as well. You know, when, when Jackie Peta, who's on my board, and this was the third year she asked me to come down, and this year she said you had to, have to, this panel is perfect for you. Uh, she knew that just a week ago, I, I, had a, I was able to practice this speech, because I was at the 100 year anniversary of the Alaska Native Sisterhood. Uh, they followed shortly on the 140, 100 year anniversary of the Alaska Native Brotherhood, which was just a few years before that. And I, won't, I went and uh, spoke with the sisters, and I point to this because they have the same sort of picture of their very first gathering there. And I talked to them about you know, how impressive it is to, to survive as an organization over that long a time period. And, and I described a conversation we have in our boardroom, because one of our long-term goals is to be meaningful and relevant to our shareholders 100 years from now. You know, only being in, in existence from 40, that's still quite a long time frame. But the conversation we have in the boardroom is that you know, the, the tribes don't face this per se, but an Alaska Native Corporation, just the fact that we have corporation in our name and we're known as for-profit entities, if in 100 years from now we're still in existence, but we're known just as a corporation or just as a for-profit entity, uh, our board would consider that failure. So we, we are a Native organization. We represent Native tribal members, uh, and we want our native values to be part of our, our organization. And we believe that the best strategy to confirm or to give us the greatest pro probability that in 100 years we're known as a native organization is to ingrain uh, native values into our management structure and across the entirety of our organization, let our customers know, let our employees know, um, let all our constituents know. 
uh, that we stay true to our native values. See, Alaska is always focused on its values. In the 80s, they had a gathering of elders, and they wanted to hear from the elders that came from all our traditional communities. What can Sea Alaska do to be more meaningful to its shareholder base? And two significant recommendations came out of that. One, uh, you need a cultural entity that focuses on enhancing culture, enhancing our language, enhancing our traditional arts and our traditional practices, our ways of life. Uh, and you need an event that brings all of us together. You know, we used to have big potlatches, kuiks, we called them. And the government made us stop. And I believe the last significant one was in Sitka in 1902. We have many now. But the elders were thinking of those time periods when you know, clans would gather from all around Southeast into these, into these big parties. So we stood up an event called Celebration. Every two years, um, dance groups and Clinkett, Haida, and Simshians come from all over Southeast Seattle, Alaska to this event. And in terms of what one of the things Sea Alaska is most proud about, they point to both the standing up of this entity, Sea Alaska Heritage Institute, that is focused on that culture, cultural component, and celebration. You know, celebration brings people together, it perpetuates our dance, it per perpetuates our songs, it perpetuates our art, uh, and it, it was the wisdom of our elders in that setting in the 80s telling Sea Alaska, you need, you're a for-profit corporation, but you need a partner like Sea Alaska Heritage Institute. Sea Alaska Heritage Institute, who's, who's our nonprofit affiliate, has carried forward that gathering of elders. They call it their Council of Traditional Scholars. And about 10 years ago, they tasked the Council of Traditional Scholars to identify the four core native values uh, that they see, believe most represent Clinkett, Haida, and Simshian people. Uh, those four core native values became the cornerstones of a program that Sea Alaska started called Values in Action. So the partnership with Sea Alaska Heritage gave us four core native values that we could begin to instill and ingrain into Sea Alaska Corporation. Uh, the, we put it into a program called Values in Action. Uh, we utilize it on a strategic, uh, uh, as a strategic framework at the board level within management. Uh, the values are the pillars. We create our goals based off of those values mixed with our mission. Our mission is to strengthen our people, culture, and homelands. Um, how's it going? She, she helped create the whole entire Values in Action roadmap, so I got thrown off a little bit. <laughs> Nicole Hollingstead, a, a, a Sea Alaska shareholder, and we worked side by side for almost nine months creating this framework, taking our core values and saying, how can we put our values into, into the way Sea Alaska manages? And you know, it truly is a decision-making framework for us. You know, if, if we have this long-term goal of being in existence for 100 years, uh, that alone is tough enough. But to be known as a native entity, we're going to face many tough decisions over those long time periods. All of us face tough decisions over long time periods. And if you're basing your decision on core values, you're most likely going to make the right decision. And that's, that was the key. And I'll, I'll describe quickly how this feeds through, because the core values as a tribal member are very meaningful. They're, they're, they, they have cultural meaning to me, but they need translation in a corporate setting, in a business setting. So Hashuka, uh, our ancestors, our past, present, and future. Culturally, it's the whole basis of our culture. Our ancestors give us the wisdom and knowledge they train us. We utilize that history and knowledge to make the best uh, life for us in the current state. But there's always the responsibility and expectation that we pass on that same wisdom to the next generation. So it just keeps the flow, and Hashuka is how we describe that. And there's so many ways that we utilize Hashuka in our business decision making. Um, most simply, you know, we ask ourselves with every decision we make, is this benefiting the 
future generation, the current generation more than it's benefiting the future generation? Pretty simple question to ask, but sometimes it, it puts you in some tough decision-making spots. Uh, Ha'ani, our land. You know, land it by itself is not a value, but the reverence for the land, the want to protect the land, the fact that the land has given us spirit and our livelihood, uh, that's the value. And while we are a small landowner in southeast Alaska, the federal government owns about 96% of our surrounding land base of that 22 million acres, uh, we still take great pride in wanting to care for the entirety of southeast Alaska, not just our 360,000 acres. So we work very closely with all the landowners and with our own harvest, you know, instill all the values into the way we do our timber harvesting, making sure there's land management practices that doesn't uh, long-term negatively affect wildlife habitat, doesn't affect negatively affect salmon streams, uh, ensures regrowth, so future generations can, you know, 60 years from now, 100 years from now, they can, they can gain advantage from the same natural resource uh, wealth that we have. Hashatzin, which is our strength, is, is the third value. And it, it ties in very closely with Hashuka. We need to, as a business, we need to understand what our strengths are. So that's one of the main ways we use Hashatzin. But it also speaks to responsibility, the discipline to train, and you know, one of the most significant, uh, our mission is strengthen our people, culture, and homelands. You know, one of the greatest ways we believe we can do that is through capacity building with our tribal members, with our shareholders. Um, and, you know, ha ha tzin, the discipline to train, the discipline to offer our shareholders avenues to career path development is always at the top of our board's mind and our management's mind. And lastly, wuchiyak, which is balance, reciprocity, and respect. Uh, it speaks to the type of relationships we want to have, the types of partnerships uh, we want to have, who we're gonna get into a joint venture with. You know, there's, our, our culture is based on balance, and there's always this sense of reciprocity. We can, we can feel when a relationship, a partnership, a business venture is out of balance, and either we work to get it back into balance, or we look for an exit. And we've utilized you know, that value uh, over the last five years in exiting probably three or four businesses and really focusing on building a government services platform that we can base out of Seattle. You know, we have almost a quarter to a third of our shareholder base in Washington State. I believe we'd be the fifth or sixth largest tribe in Washington State if, if our shareholders uh, there uh, were, were part of the system. Um, so we want that ability to center businesses where our shareholder base is. And seafood, natural foods, again, is you know, previously we had business in Miami, Guadalajara, Iowa, Alabama. You know, focusing on seafood and natural foods, you know, that, that just makes sense for our values. Uh, we're a salmon people. Our people have grown up commercial fishing. Uh, they practice subsistence. If we can get an in, into an industry that is meaningful in our region, uh, which we haven't had in, in a few years, that's where we want to focus. Um, and you know, many other examples of, of how our values feed through our decision-making structure. It's really nice to say that, that we follow our, our cultural values. It's meaningful to the global business environment. And we've seen, we've, we've seen that proven out. It translates to sustainability. It translates to the environmental social governance factors that so many people are focused on. And it attracts partners to us. It attracts business partners. It, it attracts acquisition candidates. It's attracted employees to us. So it's not just a feel-good cultural component to us. It's a real valuable part of Sea Alaska and our future. Thank you.